Well, it's back. It's where we get to play news folk and we talk about things that have been going on around the state, most of which will affect all of us uh, here in front of the camera and all the folks behind it for sure. Uh, our guest is Ziva Brandstetter, who's with the Frontier subscription on the web until when? Um, my April 24th is my last day and I'm going to join the Center for Investigative Reporting in, in the San Francisco area. Is that right? Yes. I did not know who you were going to be with. Yeah. Center for Investigative Reporting. It's a big nonprofit. Work with all kinds of media all over the country to That's do projects fantastic. about political You've got to stay in touch. I will. Absolutely. We, 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 because I got a feeling there's a lot coming in your future. Well, you're very good at what you do. Thank you. Appreciate that. And I will that. miss you. I That's don't kind. know about these two. Uh, oh, we'll miss her. <laughs> hopefully a little bit. They won't let miss me being late. <laughs> also, Charlie is here. Charlie uh, Biggs with the Beacon. Charlie, how's business? Good, good. I'm going to Coweta later this summer. Are you? Uh, <laughs> get to visit, though. Beautiful Coweta. Yeah. It's exotic. Is well, that how you pronounce it? I thought it was Coweta. <laughs> <laughs> this no. is from a man who just received incredible honors. Oh. John yeah. Durkee, uh, who operates out of public radio on uh, the TU, was just inducted into the Oklahoma Journalism Hall of Fame. Congratulations. We'll be at the end of April. I well, thought it was already a done no, deal. They just, they announced. just announced it. Can they change their mind? They sure can. They wait for Ziva to Don't leave. mess this up. They wait for me to leave. <laughs> <laughs> I got to go out of town before I get on well, thank I, you. I have a feeling that the, you guys are probably the best panel I've ever worked with. Thank you. Uh, even if you do forget your coat from time to time. <laughs> <laughs> hey, it's on the back of my door. <laughs> yeah, at least you know where it is. I know where it is. <laughs> I just forgot to put it in the car. Well, boys and girls, Congress failed to do away uh, with and replace what's known as Obamacare. It was a major dent in their push. Amazingly, when they made the move and, and Mr. Trump decided that that was going to be the first item on his agenda, nobody had a replacement. Nobody, after what was it, nine years of saying we're going to get rid of it, mm -hmm. uh, they didn't have anything to take its place. If they do get around to coming up with a plan, and if they do replace it, what do you expect to happen in Oklahoma? How, what will the impact be here? Well, John Doak, the uh, state in insurance commissioner, said that uh, there's only one company left that's servicing uh, Obamacare, and that uh, we may lose that, that company. Uh, so there's going to be a lot of turmoil. Which one was it? Blue Cross. Blue okay. Cross, yeah. You I think, think right. we'll lose them? Yeah. Uh, and, you know, it took uh, Obama 15 months to get the original bill passed. Mm -hmm. So uh, I think they'll take another crack at it. Uh, you know, Jim Bridenstine, uh, our first district congressman, mm -hmm. voted for the bill. Oh, he was going to vote for the bill. He's <coughs> uh, but uh, so they, they're going to have to do something, I think. It's just a question of how they can get people together. And, and Trump has said that he, he's... <coughs> started meeting with some Democrats trying to maybe get some... Uh, yeah, but some when he first said that, he was joking. Right, but he did meet with Sam yesterday, though. He did do it, though. Yeah, yeah. Well, now, when you say we're going to lose Blue Cross, does that mean for all coverage or just the Obamacare coverage? Just the Affordable Care Act. Just the Affordable Care Act. Well, yeah. the, the well, problem is it. that they were promised that the, the risk would be spread out. If, everyone, if, if a large number of people have to get insurance, mm -hmm. including young, healthy people, then, then, then it's a financially viable, um, you know, proposition. But the, the young people said, "Well, we're just not going to get it, and we're going to pay this this fine when we file our taxes." It's it the pain is too far off in the future, mm -hmm. um, and so it's just, you know, the insurance companies are the problem, not necessarily the idea that you know people should have to have insurance so that the, those of us who are insured when we go to the hospital. We don't have to pay three hundred dollars for Tylenol. You know that that everyone has to pay something, mm -hmm. because of course you can't predict when you're going to get sick or get sure. in, you know injury. So well, here's here's a problem for small business business people I've talked to. <clears throat> if they they get a uh, a policy for themselves and their wife, and maybe one family member, twenty two hundred dollars a month, and a seven thousand dollar deductible for each one of them, and then you look at that and you think, well, that's, that's crazy. That's thirty thousand dollars a year that I yeah. have to shell out in insurance before I get any any benefits. So I'm just going to stick that money in the bank and not get insured and pay the fine. Pay my fine. Yeah. Well, the why fine, wouldn't you? The fine's cheaper than the insurance. Yeah. Right. Why, why wouldn't you? And well, and you know, the president at the time, President Obama, said there are problems we've got to fix. Yeah. You but know. you know, people with pre-existing conditions are going to have a real issue. People whose twenty-one-year-old kids going to college and still needs to be insured are going to have an issue. 
Um, there's got to be a way to address these problems. You know, we've got a lot of smart people up there in Washington. They need to get together and figure this out. Yeah, and you know, amazingly, the Republican Party at one time was all for some sort of universal health care for the country. Well, everyone likes Medicare. And it just went away. That support it's is because gone. Because it's become a partisan issue. Health care shouldn't be a partisan issue. It should okay. be an issue that we all try to figure out. The budget in Oklahoma is an, is an ill puppy. Uh, they're talking about all kinds of cuts. In fact, John, you and I were talking yesterday. They're talking about uh, really tightening the screws in the school system. Well, yeah, What's the, going to happen the, with Tulsa The revenue school? failure, they're having to cut, what is it, 14 and a half percent, something mm -hmm. like that, out of the budget. That's about $12 million to the Tulsa Public Schools. And they're looking at uh, scaling back some athletic programs, maybe closing a high school, uh, shutting, uh, changing the school year calendar to make it shorter, just to, just to save money. And the kids are going to suffer from this. I mean, they can't help but aren't there you know. still are there are still kids going to school in some districts four days a four week? Four days a week, yeah. And and I think is it Claremore? There's one in, in the city. I think it's I know Good Tuesday. Good Tuesday. Yeah. It's, it's incredible what they've done to the schools. For the benefit of folk who might be watching, then is it safe to say that this bill that they're, they muscle through over there to give teacher raises, is that pretty much for show? How can you give somebody a raise when you don't have, when any you don't money, have to the give money. It, don't have the money to give it? So it was just kindred spirits saying, let's at least be on record. We yeah, wish you, we, wish we right could give place. you a raise. Yeah. 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 We wish you well in your future endeavors. You know, although, <laughs> although the bill, if, if you're talking about Michael Rogers' bill, uh, it was uh, 1,000, 2,000, 3,000 uh, incremental three-year raises. Mm -hmm. um, you know, the unemployment rate in Oklahoma went up this last month. Uh, and um, I have a feeling that uh, the uh, energy industry may be perking up a little bit based on the new policies by the president. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm not whether you agree with them or not. Mm -hmm. They certainly are energy friendly. And the economy is doing it. And so uh, I know that there are some legislators that think that the, the shortfall might not be as bad as we think. Uh, so there's some hope there, I think. Well, yeah, mm -hmm. but one, you know, there's so many things that bother me. Uh, you know, the, the new head of the EPA, stripping the rules of the EPA and, and then calling coal clean, which in my opinion, and, and I've said this before, is like saying pork is fat free. Coal is not clean, and if they're starting to strip the EPA of rules and regulations, and, and, and Charlie, you and I are old buds, and I, I appreciate where you're fixing to come from, <laughs> but when you start... He's letting, already preempted you. <laughs> when you start letting them put back into the streams what it took years to take out, and the Illinois River goes down the toilet again, as do other creeks and streams around the country, and the air turns brown in here, and we look like Tokyo, for God's sake, who who are you going to call? Certainly won't be Ghostbusters because I mean we're headed in that direction. I, I, I'm really concerned about it. You know, I spent a day one time with the corporation commissioner and uh, a guy who's in the natural gas business, and we toured uh, different natural gas sites in Pittsburgh County down by McAllister. And uh, you know what? They, they are so regulated, and there there is such a they're clean. I mean, you can eat off these things. Natural but, gases, yeah, yeah, for sure, yeah. not coal. And and you know, uh, the uh, the thing about coal is that uh, you can burn some coal. I mean, obviously, 100 years from now, we don't want to be burning any coal. It's, it's but the, tra the transition needs to be more gradual than just to, to cut it off because of the expense. Mm -hmm. uh, and natural gas and and oil. Uh, there are some people that would like to see us not use any of those three, and and that's not practical right now. I mean, I think natural gas is a great solution for Oklahoma. It's clean. It's it's transportable. The problem with coal is there used to be 600,000 coal jobs in this country. Now they're on the order of 40,000 to 50,000. I mean, it's not going to come back if it's not no, it's if never, it can't it's financially never come compete back to what it was. with. And so I think this is a feel-good jobs um, measure for people that voted for Trump, and that's fine, but I don't think that that stripping the regulations is going to make coal come mm -hmm. back because it, it can't compete economically with natural gas. Well, Oklahoma has, I mean, uh, America has 25% of the known coal reserves in the whole world. China has the other, another 25%. Uh, and so, like I said, uh, most of the people I know in the energy business, they say, let's not scrap everything. Well, of course they're going to say that. Well, but but, but they, they're not against uh, new technology either. But let's, let's get into it to where the expense is not horrendous. Mm -hmm. 
and I don't know anybody, I, I, seriously, I don't know any energy people that say uh, we want to pollute the streams. And, 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 and Scott Pruitt is a new EPA administrator. He was endorsed by the, uh, um, uh, the Attorney General of Arkansas, who's a liberal Democrat, by the way, because of their work they did together in terms of uh, the uh, well, chicken. yeah, because he wrote because he said, "Hey, you guys don't really have to abide by this thing that we had." Yeah, and out. they also gave teachers raises in Arkansas too. So uh, we can leave what's across the border across the border. I mean, yeah. don't get me started. On we don't want that chicken waste. Mm. We're gonna take a short break. We'll Sign come back, and I'll too. get on my real soapbox right after this. <laughs>